Hi and welcome back to the channel and today let's tackle hydraulic handbrakes. Ah yes, hydraulic handbrakes. It's a question that comes up quite a bit. It's come up a few times on the channel lately and also been asked a few times offline. So let's get down to the nuts and bolts of this. What are hydraulic handbrakes? How do they work? What's the benefit of those in rally cars? And of course, how do we go about installing them? So let's get into the background of hydraulic handbrakes or e-brakes if you're one of our US viewers. So effectively, in a normal car situation, there's usually two braking systems. Your hydraulic braking system, which is what you put your foot on the pedal to stop the car, and that actuates on all four wheels. And then there'll be a parking brake system, a handbrake or an e-brake. And that system is usually uh, actuated only on the rear wheels and it is applied by a separate system. Uh, on modern cars these days, it's done uh, electrically, electronically. However, on uh, older cars, it's usually a cable system. So there's physical cables from the actual handbrake lever that travel to the rear wheels of the car and lock the rear wheels. And it's designed for parking. Now, the reason that they have two separate systems is because if you have them on the same system and say there's a fault in the hydraulic system for some reason, there's a leak or a broken pipe or something, well, you've got a separate backup system to help to slow the car down or park the car. Also, hydraulic systems are not brilliant for parking, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. However, uh, cable systems uh, or, or mechanical systems certainly are, and that's, that's in their intent. Why would you use a hydraulic handbrake over a, the mechanical braking system in the car? Why take out the secondary or redundant system there when it, uh, it works very effectively for what it does? Well, yeah, okay, in a road car, yeah, absolutely, you, you shouldn't remove the mechanical handbrake system in the car. However, in a rally car, we need the braking to be quite efficient. Now, mechanical handbrake systems are not brilliant for multiple uses. They're designed for parking or emergency situations. So therefore, if you keep reefing on the handbrake in a, in a rally stage to, to get around a lot of tight corners in it, well, you can stretch the cables um, or wear out the mechanical components in there. I have also seen our handbrake cables snap. So therefore, one advantage of going to a hydraulic handbrake system is that you are using the primary braking system in the car. So in this case, the rear calipers, and therefore uh, you're actuating a system that works when you put your foot on the brake. So theoretically, it should work much more efficiently. Also, in line in the system, we put in a brake bias valve, and I'll cover that a little bit further in, and that allows adjustment of the front to rear brake bias in the car as well. So how much braking effort goes to the front or rear wheels. Now we're already well through the process of installing this new hydraulic handbrake into this Subaru. So the uh, mounting plates I was talking about in the last video, if you watched that video, uh, we've used that to mount the hydraulic handbrake. This comes as a complete assembly. You can buy these from all sorts of different places and online, so I won't go into the specifics of where that is. But this is effectively the hydraulic handbrake. Now you've got a master cylinder at the front of the car, which is your brake master cylinder, which your brake lines will be hooked up to, and that sends uh, fluid to the front and rear wheels. And what we've done is fitted this system in line. I have covered this a little while ago in a video back when we were building the WRX in the shed, so I'll put a link up there on effectively how it all goes together. But basically what happens is this side here is the inlet, into this little master cylinder and what it does is the fluid comes from the master cylinder the main brake master cylinder into this little uh, handbrake master cylinder here and then it exits through here now the way this works is when the handbrake is not being used so when it's in its neutral position or just sitting there this uh, goes into bypass so the fluid that comes in here exits straight out here and goes to the back wheels so no dramas there it works like a normal braking system however when you actuate the hydraulic handbrake, so pull on the handbrake lever, what it does then is a valve in here changes and it then sends pressure from this handbrake assembly to the rear wheels, either independently or on top of the pressure that's being sent from the brake master cylinder. Hopefully that didn't sound too confusing. So also in line, we fit a brake bias valve. This is an Aeroflow brake bias valve. There's many different types on the market. We use Aeroflow stuff and fittings. And this here allows us to change how much fluid pressure comes from the master cylinder that goes to the rear wheel. So effectively, this way uh, towards the front of the car, 
is the main brake master cylinder. It comes through this brake proportioning valve and then travels into the handbrake master cylinder and then on its way to the rear of the car, to the rear wheels. Now, when you install a hydraulic handbrake system like this, like an inline system, you do have to effectively re-plumb your lines or cut this in. Uh, in this case, we've used all brand new uh, braided stainless steel lines and uh, plumb it through the car properly and uh, that gives us the least amount of trouble. However, I have seen a few people just cut into their normal brake lines uh, and flare the hot lines and bend them into the car to get into this system. Not ideal, however, it does work. Now, there is another way that you can fit a hydraulic handbrake, which I have seen done in a few cases, and it's where instead of having an inline master cylinder like this, you can actually get one that is like a trailer master cylinder and it actually has its own separate reservoir there and effectively it uses the reservoir, it's only got one outlet on it which goes to the rear wheels and then a separate set of brake calipers are fitted to the rear wheels. So instead of having uh, your one set of rear brakes doing all of the work, it is uh, spread across two sets of brake calipers. Now from our point of view, A, uh, we don't like having fluid in the car, so there would be a reservoir in here and, and that's not an ideal situation, particularly if there's a, a rollover or something, then that fluid could spill everywhere and we don't want hazardous material inside the car. And secondly, it means adding more complexity and having to fit a second set of uh, rear calipers to the car and, and double sets of brake pads and things like that. So instead, this here is sending fluid to the factory rear brake calipers which are already mounted up in the car, so there's no problem with how that all goes together. So this is what it looks like from factory. You've got your factory master cylinder here, which is your brakes uh, that's connected to your pedal via a brake booster. And this little gadget here, this is a brake proportioning valve. It's a factory valve. Now the reason that that valve is fitted in there is to limit the amount of pressure that goes to the rear wheels because the master cylinder is capable of providing enough pressure that it will force uh, equal pressure or uh, more pressure to the rear wheels because the rear brakes are smaller. So in a road situation, if we didn't have a proportioning valve in there, what would happen is if you jump on the brakes because the rear brake calipers are smaller than the front, it would send more pressure to the rear and then it would cause the rear brakes to lock up first. Now in a road situation, that could be particularly dangerous. It could you know, potentially put a car into a skid. So therefore, the factory fits these proportioning valves in there that limit the rear pressure. Now in a rally car situation, if we're putting a hydraulic handbrake in, we remove this out of the line because we want to be able to control manually how much brake pressure is in there. So why would we need to be able to adjust the brake bias? Well, it's very simple really, and this particular style is a, a knob style one. You just can turn the knob backwards and forwards to adjust how much brake pressure you want to the rear. Now in normal circumstances, you usually want more braking effort on the front wheels than on the rear. However, for some people to adjust um, or compensate for fuel load, so the amount of fuel in the tank, they like to be able to adjust their brakes. Some drivers like to have uh, more equal braking pressure on the dirt rather than uh, bias towards the front, so therefore can adjust that there. And also some people like to have more rear bias. So when they get on the brakes and put enough pressure on it, it starts to lock the rears first, which can help to turn the car in to slide the car around some corners. Something that comes up uh, very regularly on this channel and uh, questions regarding the hydraulic handbrake is how to go about bleeding them. Uh, now the easiest way to explain this is hydraulic handbrake, you bleed it just like you would any other brake uh, system. I effectively, you just leave it alone and bleed the brakes. You don't need to do anything more than that to it. Uh, some people ask, do you pump the hydraulic handbrake handle while you're bleeding the brakes? Uh, and the answer to that is no, no. You, with this particular handbrake system that we're using, like a, a bypass type system or an inline system, you just leave that handbrake alone. And in the, um, in the uh, neutral position or the off position, um, the master cylinder, your brake master cylinder, the main one at the front of the car, will just push the fluid and any air right through that system uh, and out to the rear wheels and you just bleed the brakes as normal with uh, no drama at all. 
I'm using a single man uh, bleeder because uh, I don't have anybody helping me out in the workshop today. Uh, so I'm, uh, I'm on my own. Uh, and uh, these work just as effectively. The only uh, caveat there is if you have a brake bias valve in like we've put in there, uh, what we do is we set it to the middle position so that fluid flows through it so that doesn't provide a great deal of restriction uh, which allows the master cylinder to push the fluid through fine. Uh, we'll bleed this up, get all the air out of it. Uh, the other trick as well if you are using braided brake lines um, or any kind of brake fitting is uh, as you're bleeding it, You've got to go around and check all of your lines and all your fittings and there's quite a few fittings in this car to check including the t's at the back and things like that right from the master cylinder through the car keep checking the lines to make sure that they are uh, all dry around the fittings uh, and the easiest way to do that is just to run your finger around the fitting with a with a dry glove and see if you've got any fluid uh, on your uh, glove. If there's any fluid whatsoever, then you need to look into that and work out where it's actually leaking from. Sometimes just a tiny little nip up's enough. Um, if you haven't got your, your lines done properly, you may have to resort to uh, redoing a, uh, re-terminating a, a line if needs be. Uh, in this case, hopefully all these lines are good and um, I shouldn't hopefully find too much drama with leaks, having done quite a few of these um, braided brake line systems now, but you never know. Alright, let's bleed it up and we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so with the magic of television, the brakes are all bled. However, I'm just in the process of checking. Yep. To make sure there are no leaks. Sort of reach around the fittings and have a look and see. All good. Yep. Yep. Now, you might see there's a little bit of uh, moisture there. That's actually not brake fluid. What I've done is I've washed them all down with water. Um, we just spray them down. It's something you should do. You've got to be a bit careful with brake fluid. It's quite corrosive, particularly to paintwork. Uh, so um, after you've finished bleeding and, and mucking around with it all, wipe it all up and wash it all down. Give a good wash with water to uh, get it all off and out of the way. All right, uh, the brake pedal feels pretty good. So I'm happy that that is all good. We will run the car and check it and uh, just make sure that the brake pedal pressure stays even. And uh, we've got to put it on the hoist anyway because the brake lines, the old um, metal brake lines or Bundy lines are still under the car at the moment. We've disconnected them, but we haven't removed them. So once we get it up on the hoist to do other bits and pieces, we'll get this uh, brake lines all removed out. And uh, also the handbrake cables, uh, they're the factory Subaru handbrake cables there. Uh, we've disconnected those um, and removed all the guts. These have got um, drums uh, for handbrakes. So all of that's all been removed from behind there. And uh, so it just relies on the disc uh, brakes and the calipers at the rear for the braking. All right, good. So let's tackle a couple of the common questions regarding handbrakes, when to fit them and where. Now the thing is, with the actual fitting of the handbrake assembly itself, it depends on what kind of car, what space, what driver, what seating position. So it's not going to be viable for all cars in all situations. There's quite a few variables in there. However, for the most part, fitting a hydraulic handbrake, the physical fitting of it, is not a big drama. However, the actual mechanical side of things, or the plumbing side of things, may be a little bit trickier. If you have a drum brake rear end, hydraulic handbrakes uh, do work. However, drum brakes work in a different fashion to discs, obviously, and the way that they're adjusted also works in a different fashion. So shoes are actually ratcheted out in a drum situation, and without a cable handbrake in some vehicles, that means there's no way to ratchet those shoes out. In other words, keep adjusting those shoes. So you could find that if you keep pulling on the hydraulic handbrake, eventually the, the handbrake will become further and further and have less and less effect because the shoes need adjustment. You might be able to manually adjust the shoes, so that's something to be aware of. Also, with some rear calipers, the cable handbrake assembly is actually built into the rear caliper. You may have to uh, lock that off or disable it uh, if you remove the mechanical handbrake assembly because otherwise there's a possibility that that could jam on. 
So all-wheel drive cars uh, or four-wheel drive cars come up quite regularly in terms of the discussion regarding hydraulic handbrakes and whether you should fit one or not. I know we've had some recent discussions about the VR4 and also the early Subarus and about fitting uh, hydraulic handbrakes. And effectively, it depends what kind of transmission system is fitted into the car. If we're talking, say, the GC WRX, which has a five-speed transmission, the earlier five-speed transmissions in them, or say like the VR4 or even some of the uh, Subarus, the later ones that have a viscous coupling in there, it's not so easy to break that uh, viscous coupling or center differential open to get the uh, rear wheels to lock. So effectively what happens is if you grab the handbrake in those cars, for the most part, it's going to lock all four wheels. And some of you will be going, well, no, hang on a minute, you just put your foot on the clutch. No, that doesn't help because the clutch disengages the engine from the transmission, not the transmission from the wheels. So therefore, all four wheels are connected to the transmission, even though you are pulling the handbrake and locking supposedly the rear wheels, because the whole lot is all interconnected, it locks all four wheels. So in those cases, generally a hydraulic handbrake is really used for parking, or maybe in an emergency situation, if you really come unstuck, you might try and grab it to slow the car down. However, it is not so effective to be able to do handbrake turns. However, if you have a DCCD system fitted, which is common in some of the later Evos uh, and also into the Subarus, where the center differential is controlled by an outside factor, in Subarus it's mechanical and in some of the later Evos it's hydraulic, you can pull the handbrake because what happens is there'll be need to be a sensor fitted to the handbrake mechanism somewhere that tells the controlling computer for the center differential to open the differential and send drive to the front wheels only and allow the handbrake handbrake to be pulled to lock the rear wheels. So there are circumstances where you can use them. I did say earlier on about parking and hydraulic handbrakes, and it's something you've got to be aware of. What happens is hydraulic handbrakes, the pressure bleeds off in the handbrake over time. And so therefore you might park the car, lock the hydraulic handbrake to hold the car, and in a short term scenario that works, so maybe at the start of a stage you're holding the car before you know the, the lights go green and, and you're off and racing, um, or uh, short-term parking, it's fine. However, longer term and uh, over the space of say probably half an hour or more, uh, you probably need to park the car in gear and park it on a level surface because the handbrake will become ineffective. That's even worse if you've got race brake pads because quite often race brake pads require heat to work. So they work really well when they're hot and uh, they lock on. And then as they cool off, the braking effort uh, in the pads and in the hydraulic system uh, then bleeds off. And then therefore uh, the handbrake becomes ineffectual. And I actually have seen that happen where somebody parked a car on a hillside, rally car on a hillside, uh, with a hydraulic handbrake, uh, left it parked in Park Ferme and walked off and uh, the car rolled away and actually crashed into somebody else's rally car that was parked in Park Ferme. So just something to be aware with hydraulic handbrakes. They're really designed as a momentary use system or a very short term use system. Uh, another question that comes up occasionally is, can you have both systems? Can you have a cable system and a hydraulic handbrake? And th the answer to that is yes, and I have seen it done successfully in a couple of cases where uh, if you have space on the transmission tunnel, you can fit two handbrake systems in there, a cable system for parking the vehicle permanently, and then a hydraulic system just to actuate uh, the rear brakes. Hopefully that has cleared up some of the misinformation out there about hydraulic handbrakes. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks very much for watching. Please like, give us a thumbs up. It's important to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. And we'll catch you again soon. Cheers.